You guys hear me okay? Am I okay? I don't know what I'm going to read out here because, you know, as always, I have a great sermon always planned and then God changes my mind just before we deliver it, so we just, I really got to stop writing them. That's what I need to do. And uh, just let the Holy Spirit go where we're going to go. Okay. So let's open up with a word of prayer. Merciful Father, I just thank you for the opportunity today, Lord, that uh, you have brought us to this place and you have prepared a message. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that is in this building today and each and every person that surrounds us. Thank you for what this church represents and for the courage of the people that are here. Lord, I ask that you would just uh, take over my words, that it would no longer be I, that I would disappear and that you would be ever present. Amen. Father, it's not about me, it is about you. Amen. Lord, that it is, it's not about the words that I say, but it's the words that you have to say. Amen. Lord, I am just thankful that we are in a place with people that are seeking your face. I say this humbly in the name of our Lord, Savior, and risen King, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, uh, let's start off with, uh, my name is Bert Eldridge, and I, uh, I don't know with the camera guy where I'm allowed to be and where I'm allowed, so I'm we'll follow you. really bad. We'll follow you. You'll follow me? Okay. <laughs> My name is Bert Eldridge. I come out of Casper, Wyoming. Uh, this is my tribe, and I will be introducing them here a little bit later. And uh, we didn't mean to take over a big section of your church. I don't know why they all sat together and then all you guys sat over here. We're all part of the same tribe, you know, in the great scheme of things. But um, you guys need to scatter around a little bit. Move around. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, you know, uh, I. The next thing I want to do, I'd like to apologize for not being able to make it here the last couple of times I've been scheduled to be here because my health has not been very cooperative. Uh, but I realized the last time, the, the Friday before I was due here on Sunday, I, got, uh, I have an infection that lives in my leg and on occasion it attacks my, my blood. And I got very, very sick and so we called Rick on Saturday and let him know I wasn't coming. And then it did it to me again uh, just before I was uh, due to come up here the next time. And uh, when I was talking to him on the phone, he said, you know, uh, Mr. Lynch, Don Lynch, he's unable to come this time. I said, well, wait a minute. And, and it struck me that I have to be here in order for Mr. Lynch to come, if that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, <clears throat> what the devil was trying to do, what the enemy is trying to do, and let's call him who he is, what yeah. Satan was trying to do is to interrupt what is going on in this building. Okay, yeah. but this church is about to explode into something that like you guys have never seen before. Yeah. Okay, you may not realize this, it doesn't take a whole, we don't need 700 people in a room, we need one believer is all we need. Because yeah. one in Jesus equal winner, yeah. right? Yeah. So what we've got to realize is that what the devil is trying to do is to shut down what is about to be ignited out of this place. And, um, you know, when he, when he talked about the prophecy, because I do follow this, I do watch this on TV, or on my computer, uh, at, not at work. <laughs> now, Actually, I do. I, I have my earbuds in 90% of the time in, in my job, and uh, and I'm listening to sermons, etc. And this is one that I do listen to every week. Now, one of the things that I know that he had mentioned is that I was excited about this prophecy, because one of the things that when he's talking about the state being overtaken, it has to be overtaken. It has to be. One thing that God just told me, and I know that that's, I hope that everybody's okay with that because God does speak to each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. We realize that God speaks to us through many different avenues. One, He speaks to us through His Word. He speaks to us through times of worship. He speaks to us through times of prayer. He puts dreams and visions into your head. He, he applies Himself into you. You cannot have a relationship with the Father without the Son. Amen? Amen. And you've got to have the indwelling of His Holy Spirit in order to have a communication. Yep. Amen? Amen? I'm used to a church really talking to me a lot. Yeah, brother, let's come on. <laughs> I like it. Come on. Right. You guys know. 
Now, part of the reason I, I brought my team today is because uh, here at the end of services, we're going to, uh, you guys are going to allow them to experiment a little bit because we're, uh, some of them are a little raw and a little untested, so they are going to prophesy a little bit, and we're going to close this out today with them praying, uh, inviting you guys up for prayer, etc., and then visit with you. Are we all good with that? Amen. Okay. So allow us a little grace. Amen? Amen. Okay, because there, there are times that when we're doing things, we don't always have it 100% right, but if we don't step out of faith, right. then what's the point? Yeah. You know, uh, I have a, a, a podcast that I put out every week, and it, it's called The Barbarian Prophet, and that's why we call ourselves a tribe, okay? Because we are a bunch of barbarians. Because the worst thing you can ever do as a, as a Christian is become civilized. Because when we become civilized, we start to fall into a religion. Yeah. When we start to fall into a religion, we start to follow uh, rituals. Yeah. And we're not following rituals because they mean something to us. What happens is we start to follow rituals because that's what we do every week. So we've got to bring that to a close. And, and what the opening to that show is always getting you out of the church and back into the wild. I don't want anybody to leave their church. Yeah. But I want you to live wild. Because wild has a meaning for us. Wild means, W-I-L-D, we intentionally love daily. Are you with me? We intentionally love daily. When we live in the wild, it means that we take a chance on people. We step out and we go to the people. We go to the orphan. We go to the widow. We help them. We go to the poor. We preach. We, everything that we do is preaching. And when necessary we actually open up our Bibles and mention something. Because the truth of the matter is, is you should be living a Christian lifestyle. And in living a Christian lifestyle, we've got to put a few things out of our life. One thing is prejudice. Are you with me? Yeah. And I'm not talking... Racism has its own thing over here. But when we start talking about prejudice, when we're looking over at the church across the street and go, well, they don't believe like us. Okay? Well, they still believe in Jesus Christ. They may not have it all like we have it. And we may need to, to worship a little different. We're a little, you notice we're a rowdy bunch. We sing and we... That's us, okay? And we... <laughs> hopefully you all let us come back. <laughs> Excellent. Well, one of the things is, when we take a look at this, we have got to start putting that stuff down and we have to start reaching out and loving one another. Jesus says that they will know that you're his people yeah. by our love for one another. Amen. One of the reasons that we have such a fractured church, why so many of the current generation is walking away from the church, uh, is because we can't get along. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's true. And when you guys are in a small town like this, it's real easy to look down at the, I don't know if you guys got a Greek Orthodox church and go, they don't know what's up. They've only been around for, I don't know, 2,000 years, but I'm sure they're people You know, they may do it a little bit different, but that's okay. Yeah. I was asking God during worship, I was asking him, all right, ready to for a message. Because I actually had a planned message, and we, we figured out we couldn't put it on the screen. And i got to go, amen. Because I'd have messed that up. You know why? Because it had been my message. And that's not the message you're going to get today. Okay? Alright, we're good with that, right? God said, I called you to a desert place where people have dug wells. Are you with me? People can get into a river anytime they want. They love to get into the river of prophecy. They love to get into the river. But that means that it's flowing from God and it's flowing to somewhere and it's picking up things, dropping things off, and that's all awesome. People that do that are generally pretty lazy, too. Sorry, but that's the truth. But if you want a well, you've got to put forth some effort. You've got to put a shovel in the earth and you've got to start to dig. That means that you've got to start applying things in your life. You've got to dig in His Word. You've got to dig into some of the hurts and damage in your life and start getting them repaired. You've got to start taking a look at what are some of my issues and how do I relinquish that to God. Because see, one thing that that we teach, or that I teach, endlessly, I teach it in the system, I teach it wherever I go, is, is we, we have two messages this year, and it will increase in the coming year. Because 2020, we know we're all going to see clearly, right? 
I can tell you this, in 2017, here's the reality, is it was started the rumbling in the church. There started to be some little, little push, push me, shove you things happening. 2018, we had a shaking in the church. Many, many churches, no matter where you went in the United States and Europe, they had people shaking off to the side. They were leaving the church, going to new churches. They were starting to become some of that. 2019 has been a year of great division. And we have seen church after church after church right down the middle. Hey, this is what we believe. We're leaving you. This is what we believe. And we're leaving you. Are you with me? Yeah. I don't even know what's going yeah. on in this church, so if some of this is happening, I'm not picking on you, I'm just bringing it up. Okay? Are we good? Okay. Okay. So the other thing that happens when we start to take a look at where we're going in 2020 is God has given us a clear vision. Don't ever be mournful of the people that have left because he shook them off of you for a reason. Okay? The thing is, they're not bad people. No. But they're not on the same path as you. And if you can all get in one line, I mean, we're not strolling through the desert with a GPS system going, recalculating, recalculating, right? No. What we've got to do is we're following the Spirit. And He is leading this group of people one direction. He may be leading that group of people another place because He puts all things into place for His good. Yes. Right. Amen? And just because we aren't necessarily on the same page with where we're headed as a church... Uh, and those people show up, that's okay. Wherever they went, that's fine. God bless them. Okay? When you have somebody leave your church, let me tell you, do not go, oh, they're leaving. Ask them to come. Come one more time. No, we're not going to ask you to stay. We, well, we want to bless you as you go. Do you hear me? Because what you give, you get. You cannot receive anything you don't give away. If you do not bless people that are going on their way, you cannot be blessed on your journey going. Amen? That's right. This is so not my message today. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So I told you there's two things that we're teaching. That I'm constantly in a state of teaching right now. One is heaven to earth thinking. Heaven to earth thinking. Everybody say heaven. Heaven to earth, to earth. earth. thinking. 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 Alright. Now the reason we have heaven to earth thinking is because this, we have spent too much time in our lives planting ourselves here on the ground, begging God to do something. Yeah. What we need to do is plant ourselves in heaven, understanding that we were raised again in the resurrection. Yeah. Galatians 2.20 says, it's no longer I who live, yeah. but Christ who lives in me. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So when we plant ourselves in heaven, then we can change things on the earth. But as long as we're sitting here on the earth and we're looking to heaven, go, please change this. Okay, you cannot go to God and hold Him hostage in your prayers. Are you with me? We go to God all the time and say, Man, these are all my problems. Like, you don't know. You're like, I made you. I figured in your stupidity early. Right? He looks at you and goes, oh, I'm, thinking, I'm pretty sure God does not have a flat forehead. What? Burnt. So, he has a plan. He's like, I'll give him Christy. Yes, that will straighten some of that stupid up. Right? So the whole thing, where we go with this, where we go with this heaven and earth thinking is we realize, if you guys have grabbed your Bibles, I hope you brought your Bibles, I pick on people to bring a telephone. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm, I'm not a mean, but I'm going to tell you why. Because if we are going to give over our lives to the Blue Church, and the Blue Church is the social media, the Blue Church is actually something the intellects call, what they call it, the news media and stuff like that, because they're constantly after your brain. Constantly, constantly. It's a red pill, blue pill. I reference the Matrix all the time. My buddy Brent back there, I finally had to give him a copy because he'd never seen the movie. And now he goes, everything you say makes sense. <laughs> I have copies in the car. Just kidding. <laughs> but the thing with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, Who's there? Anybody, anybody? You're there? Would you stand up and read for me, sir? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So what did he create first? Yeah. Heavens. And what did he create second? Earth. All right, so he gets started there, and then he lands here. Amen? Amen. So what we've got to do is, right off the get out of his book, he starts to tell us, in the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. L is what we, we have. Now, one thing that I've 
I do enjoy doing this. Uh, much to my wife's dismay, on occasion she'll come home and I'll have like five Bibles open on the kitchen table and all kinds of books uh, because I am looking for something in Greek or Hebrew or something. I spent a lot of years going to school to get a doctorate in theology. And you know what that means? Not much. I mean, I... <laughs> but she's like, why do you spend all that money? <laughs> But the truth of the matter is, when, when it comes to that, when it comes to uh, those degrees, I never was pursuing a degree. What I was pursuing is better understanding of God. Amen. Because when I came to Christ, I was locked up. I was locked up. Not in, I don't have a felony. I was locked up in a county jail. I was running a motorcycle club. I got locked up, and God came to me in a very powerful way. When he came to me, my life really started to change, but when I when I started studying the Bible, I didn't want anybody fooling me. I didn't want to end up in a cult. I didn't want to end up in a, a, a sucker's religion, where they, uh, I mean, I'm going to be just real straight with you. The Jehovah Witnesses tell you a very good story. The Mormons tell you a very good story, but that is not the way to Christ. The only way we're ever going to get to the Father. See, here's one of the things. Is, I'm not trying to get any of you into heaven. I'm trying to get heaven into you. Okay? Because if we, when we take a look at John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to what? The Father. The Father. He didn't say anything about heaven. I want you to think about that for just a minute. Because what God wants, what the Father wants, is you dwelling with Him as a family. Yeah. Amen? Amen. What he wants you to do is be dwelling in his presence. We don't have to wait to start living in heaven there. We're bringing heaven to earth. Yeah. He tells us that in, uh, in the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. We all know the Lord's Prayer? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Let's see how you guys know it. Because everybody knows it a little bit different. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. And one thing that the internet has done is it's taken out the word evil one. And it's replaced it with a simple word called evil. Pay attention to your Bibles, too. Because let me tell you something. Evil is an action. Evil is a thought process. But you're not at war with a thought process for that. Are you with me? We have an enemy. He's called Lucifer. Are you with me? And if we have an enemy, then we know who we're fighting. When we fight evil, then we see evil everywhere. We look into other people's hearts and go, well, that's evil. So, wait, i got to be at war with you. Because you're evil. We've seen the same thing after 9-11. I remember, and I was not saved back then, but I remember 9-11, and we all remember 9-11. I live around here, we all remember 9-11. Amen? Amen? Except for the real, real young ones. <laughs> like Don. <laughs> but here's the deal. Is I remember when, our, when President Bush first stood up and he said, we are going to fight terrorism. And I went, okay, I'm good with that. And we could, because we, we could fight terrorism because that's an action. That means we try to interrupt what people are doing. The second thing that he came to, and he said, we're going to fight terrorists. I went, yes, absolutely, we can do that. We can fight terrorists because that is a collective of people. We can go to war with a collective of people. But when, he's, when he broke that down before he left office and said, we're in war with terror, you cannot overcome an emotion. Are you with me? We end up here. I, I, we've got, we've got Brent's son is over there fighting this fight right now. Amen. He's over in the middle of Iraq or in the upper end of Iraq, and we're getting, we pray for Ethan all the time. Every day. And Ethan, I know you're watch, going to be watching this, so we're praying for you every day, brother. Amen. Now the thing is, is that when we start to take a look, are you in battle with emotions, or are you in battle with the true enemy? Because when we are battling with the true enemy, we don't see a problem in the person. I'm not, I'm not picking on you directly, but I'm going to utilize you, okay? 
Dane, when, what happens is we go, her and I are not getting along, but what can happen is <clears throat> I can look past anything that we have in between us and find Christ inside of her. Okay? That, that means that sometimes i got to back away from the emotional fight. Amen? Amen? This is how we learn to start loving one another. Now, what's the opposite of love? Hate. Hate? Anybody else? Anything? Not you. You're not, you can't play. None of my team can play. Anybody else? What do you think? Yeah, you. Yeah, that's me. See my fingers over here? Go to play in church, huh? Awesome. <laughs> What's the opposite of love? Hey, that's what most of us think because we've been trained that. Now I'm going to give you a new concept. All right? Are you guys ready? Ready. Minds open? Are we ready? The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is use. When we use somebody. Or we use a situation to get ourselves ahead. Are you with me? Because the love that God intended for all of us to show one another has no use in it. It means that you love unconditionally without any expectation, anything in return. What we do is we love that person with all that is in us. Because he gave us another heaven to earth direction. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm going to give you an acronym because I like acronyms, obviously. Because it helps me remember things. Joy. Jesus. Others. You. Are you with me? That brings a joy into our life. But we start to learn to let God pour through us because God never uses anybody. I don't care what anybody has told you. God's never used a single person. He loves through them. And you have to be in somewhat of a relationship here in order to let it flow out here. Because when we get ourselves down to just us, we throw up numerous things in front of us. We throw up prejudices. You know, I don't like how that guy dresses. I don't, I don't like where that guy works. I don't like what that vehicle. I mean, come on, Dodge, Chevy, Ford, we all punch each other in the face over it, right? Yeah. Harley Davidson versus the other motorcycles that people don't like. <laughs> You know? I'm not hacking on them, I'm just, don't write them. <laughs> but the reality is, when we take a look at each other, can we love each other without expectation of anything in return? Can you truly look at, at a child and say, I love you, and I don't need anything back? Because I tell you, I spend a whole lot of time Seeking love in all the wrong places. Why do we end up with so many people in the wrong mindset with one another? I fell out of love with her. I fell out of love with him. Well, it's because you never were in love with them. It's that all of a sudden your loyalty ran out because you didn't need that anymore. They didn't need you anymore. Amen? I mean, that's a hard truth. It's a hard truth, but it's true. But when we start to plant ourselves in heaven... And we start to look at things through the eyes of Christ as opposed to looking at things through our eyes, our interpretation, our emotions. See, you spent a whole life being trained from the time you were very little. No, that's the very first word you learned. Other than at our house, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say yeah, yeah. Because that's what Christy teaches them right away, just to irritate their mother. So. <laughs> But the first thing that we learn is no. We start to have negative connotations right away. It's okay. You need to tell your kids no. Because then we start offering them choices. Don't do that. The reason you want, you can go through an explanation with a three year old right now. I guarantee you, you go, look, this is why you do not want to do that. And you know what they carry? They don't care. <laughs> they just know you said no, right? And they're going to. They're going to wait till you're gone. They're going to try it anyway, right? <laughs> How many of you guys have tried to control your children? I absolutely have. God tried to control his a little bit too. Didn't work out. <laughs> it doesn't work. We can't. But we get, God gave them choice. Now let's think about this for just a minute. Because this is part of this heaven to earth thinking. 
Here's what I've discovered with most Christians, is they don't know what the original sin was. Most of them have an opinion. I'm not going to ask for your opinion. But what I'm going to tell you is it's going to fall in one of these categories. One is they were disobedient. Two, they were tricked. Three, they were, uh, they were lured and then they, they were repented. But, they, but it was too late because we have a punishing God. Here's the truth of the matter. What was the charge for Jesus that caused him to be crucified? What's the charge? Do you remember? Blasphemy. 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 What is blasphemy? No, it's to put your place, yourself in God's place. Right. To claim to be God yourself. Now he had to be crucified for that single act. Because that single act goes back to Genesis chapter 3. And you'll find if you, you spend very much time with me, I'm always in Genesis 1, 2, 3. I'm in John 1, 2, 3. One tells you what the problem is, the other one tells you how to get fixed. Okay? If you only got six chapters you're ever going to read in the Bible, those are the six chapters you need to read. This is why we're in trouble, this is how we get fixed. Amen? Amen. Now what happens is, when Jesus had to have hands, the, the priest laid hands on him, okay, first of all, he tears his uh, rope, and he says, blasphemy, and he lays hands on Jesus. If you go back to Leviticus, what you're going to find is that's exactly what had to happen to the goat. You proclaim the sin, you lay the hands on it, and then you kill it. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to Jesus at the cross. Amen? Mm -hmm. We think Christ is always there to deal with all these other little problems. Everything else you've got going on in your life is a symptom of the one problem. The one problem is you made God yourself a God. That's the true purpose. Now think about yourself for just a minute. I know you know, no, nobody wants to go, yeah, yeah, I do that all the time. But that's why we feed our flesh. That's why we, we do things that make us feel good or elevated. That's why people walk into a church and they say, that church didn't fit my needs. Guess what? It's not meant to fit your anything. We're here to worship Him. Amen? Amen. And if we come in here to worship us, you got issues. But most of us don't identify that as the problem. Now Jesus, when he's in the garden, we, we see, uh, and I, I can pull the verses, but we see where in three of the Gospels, in the Synoptic Gospels, in, in Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke, he prays four times. And it says, he goes back and says it again, but four very specific times in those three Gospels, he says, Lord, if you could take this cup from me, yet not my will, but thy will be done. We all agree on this? Amen. He says it four times. So I'm trying, because I'm a guy, I am a, a guy that digs for why, why is this so specific? Because then it says, then he went back and prayed the same. But it doesn't, it, it repeats it. Even in one of the Gospels, I think it's funny, he says it twice specifically. And then says, and then he went back and said the same. But he said it four times. So I think to myself, why? So I go back to the garden. Because he's in a garden. Or where was the other problem? In a garden. What was Adam supposed to be doing? Tending the garden, right? When Jesus rose from the grave, who did Mary mistake him as? The gardener. Huh, yeah. Yeah. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody's brain kick. That's awesome. So when we go back to the garden, Jesus or uh, Adam. Bear in mind, Adam didn't. She didn't cook him an apple pie and slip it to him. Okay. Quit blaming women. Quit blaming women. He was right there next to her. It says so. Read the text. He was right there. And God is very specific when he's talking to Adam. Did you eat of the tree of which I told you not to eat? Amen. Yeah. He didn't talk to her. Yeah. Talk to him. Amen? Amen? It's just in the text. Sorry, guys. I'm not, I'm not interpreting anything. I'm not 
just reading the Bible. Okay? That's what the Word said. I've had people say, I don't like how you're interpreting that. I just read the sentence. I'm not interpreting anything. Okay? But what happens here is when he steps off, then the next thing you know, now if everything was good and perfect, everything was good, right? That's what God kept saying when he was telling It's good. It's good. The only time, the first time he says it's not good is it's not good for man to be alone. Amen? Amen. Brings along the woman. Now I'm going to check my watch, but you know what that means? Absolutely nothing. Okay? <laughs> I'm preaching sure we're done. Is that okay? Yeah, right. Okay. That's how it goes. <clears throat> that is how it goes. And now in Africa we preach for up to 12 hours, but I promise not to do that to you guys today. <laughs> So what happens is in, in, in the garden, they consume the apple. Their eyes are open. They consumed the apple that was, or not, it's not an apple, it's the fruit. And they consumed the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I had a guy one time walk up to me in San Francisco and try to hand me a newspaper. And, my, and I said, I'm not interested. I could see it's very liberal. I was just not into what the cover said, actually. And the guy goes, uh, hey man, I said, no, I don't want it. He said, hey man, knowledge is power. And my wife immediately goes, oh, no. <laughs> and disappears. And I, throw, I said, what did you just say? He said, knowledge is power. I said, that's the oldest lie in the book. Like literally, that book is the oldest lie. Because if you go back and you consume from the tree of knowledge, their eyes were open and it didn't get better from there. <laughs> That's a lie. From the pit of hell. Don't ever buy into knowledge and power. And the wisdom is. Because that's taking what the Holy Spirit is giving it to you and applying it in your life. That's what wisdom looks like. Amen? Amen. But it's got to come start in heaven and get down here to earth. And you're the conduit. You got it? You're the, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbors yourself. Don't get pulled into some of the things that are going on nowadays in the churches. Well, I'm seeing it all over. I've seen it more in the last little while, in the last few months than I've ever seen before where new age thinking is starting to come in. They're not even calling God God anymore. They're calling him the source. And I'm like, wait, what? What, what, what? And I mean, these are big, mainline churches. Do not get pulled into that. We have one Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 He has a Father and there is a Holy Spirit. Right? I mean, yeah, I, no matter how you cut it, it ain't my fault. It's, it's the way it's written in the book. Okay? Now, on the other end of this is when we get back to the garden. Suddenly, their eyes are open. The very first thing they do is they, they realize they're naked. Now, people always think, well, well, they didn't have on any clothes. But here's the truth of the matter is. Everything there was made in the light of God. And all of a sudden they're diminished. Their covering has been torn away. Why did they try to sew fig leaves together? When to cover up their nudity so they could be as bright as the plants. Because the plants are now brighter than them. Everything around them is not fallen. Only they are fallen. Are you with me? So they try to cover themselves up. People, people ask that question, why, why do they try to cover themselves up? They try to cover themselves up because they wanted to look brighter because they stood out all of a sudden. So God comes walking and the very first thing is he says, Adam, where are you? For our Spanish listeners, donde esta su corazón? You know, where's your heart? Where are you? He knows where he's located. Yeah. He's asking, where are you? And Adam immediately pops out and he says, We heard you coming. We're naked. Okay, so their first question is, God gives him an opportunity. He knows his heart is broken, right? First thing God says is, Where are you? Second thing God says is, uh, what have you, or what have you, uh, Who told you you were naked? And then the third thing he says to him is, What have you done? Now, the minute I know that everybody, you want to know how I know little kids are not saved right away? Okay, they can be. They can be. Sorry. But I tell you how I know we're born with that spirit of Adam. 
is my grandson. He's my study in the humans. Okay? Trent, he's now eight, but when he was about, I don't know, two and a half or so, he goes. I said, Trent, who ate all those cookies? Chocolate on his face, cookies still in his hand. He goes, Gracie, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, bam, Adam thinking. <laughs> Because the only person mad in that is not the father. The only person mad in that story is Adam. Because he's been undone. And the very first thing, if you pay attention to how it works, God is asking, he's give, he gave him three opportunities. Who told you? And he says, the woman whom you gave to be with me. Pay attention there. People around you all the time understand where their heart is when they blame everybody else and God for their problems. We don't need to be mad at that person. We need to be praying for that person. Amen? We need to be working with that person. We need to be pointing them to the way out of that mess. And that way out of that mess is how? Jesus. Jesus is the only way out of that mess. Amen? Some of that you got to take on some man and go, yeah, I messed up. Help me, help me. We'll do that lesson another day. But then he asked the woman, did you eat the fruit? And she said, well, he's already blamed you and he blamed me and there's nobody else to blame, so I'll blame the snake. <laughs> right? So now let me take you back to when Jesus is praying in the garden. He asked four times, can this cup be taken from me? No, not my will, but your will be done. When we go back and we look at the correlation between what Jesus was doing, he was undoing that wrong. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Because when he tells you to pick up your cross and carry it daily, it means that we're going to get to a crossroads. And you have to make a decision. Am I going to go with, with God yeah. and his will, or am I going to do mine? Are you with me? Because when you read those, I hear people preach all the time very wrong with P.S. And Rick, if you preach it this way, I apologize now. But, but the truth of the matter is, people always say, well, Jesus was afraid. He was never once afraid. There is no question mark in that sentence. He is not asking that. He's making a statement. He's making a clear statement because he is undoing the wrong done in the first garden. Amen? <coughs> Do we, we learn anything today? Okay. So two things we need to walk out of here knowing today. First thing we need to walk out of here knowing, what's the opposite of love? Use. Use. If we are using somebody, so let's evaluate every situation we're in. I don't care if you're even over there talking to the person, exchanging money, the waitress, uh, if you're at the mini mart, I don't care. Well, that shows how old I am. The loafing jug. <laughs> If you're in any of those things and you're doing an exchange with a person, are you doing it with the kindest way you do? You don't have to preach Christ, but you need to be living it. Amen? Amen. Because when we're talking to that waitress and we're getting ready to pray for our meal in public, do you take time with your waitress to say, hey, we're about to pray for our meal. Is there anything that you need us to pray for? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Christy just abandons me in Walmart. Mm -hmm. Because I'm usually like, oh, you need prayer? Well, let's take care of it now. Will you pray for me? I love when people do that to me. Will you pray for me? Yep. Yeah. Right now. Because I've got a terrible memory and I will not do it later. So let's take care of it now. Amen. So I'm not afraid to pray anywhere. Christy has shopping to get done. I can tell you I make one aisle, maybe two. She's got two shopping carts headed towards the front door by the time I head out. But that's okay, right? I'm doing my gig, she's doing hers, obviously. <laughs> I started this off with talking about being in a desert place. And one of the things that, that Rick brought up about his prophecy, is that there was an electrical spark going from here to Casper. There has to be a fuse lit in order for all of this thing to get rolling. What has to transpire, what has to transpire is 
This is starting today. There's a reason that my team has come here. The reason that my team has come here, it's mostly about tacos, but on the other end, because I was only getting to them until I said, hey, they're having tacos, and everybody went, I'll go. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Kind of. <laughs> Just a bonus. But the truth of the matter is, is that when we, when we started to head this way, the reason they come up here is because we see the importance of what Rollins is playing. Rollins is all, you guys know this, and this is no offense to anybody, and I know you guys will not take offense. People think this is a drive through town. Yeah, yeah. At most, you stop by and you can get down. And let me tell you, I've been in your oil field for 30 years. You know how many times I drove through this town? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm away to Colorado, I'm away to Utah, constantly passing through. And this is, you stop and get gas, you catch a highway, you get moving. But you got some more than that. You're more than that. You have an interstate out here that's reaching from one end of the country to the other. I know he's brought that up. Don't think that you got to talk to every person on the highway. You need to be praying for them as they're passing through. Some things are cops, some things are cop. Amen? What we've got to do is we've got to keep our mind realizing that it is in the dry places where a well is dug. I mean, if you ever go to Israel, I haven't been there yet. We're hoping to go here soon, right, Scott? But I can tell you, every time I look at every picture of it, I'm like, oh, the, why is that a beautiful place? It looks like a pile of rocks. <laughs> but once a well was dug, and people started getting water, and people started getting fed, and things started getting grown, it made a difference. Amen? <laughs> when we take a look at all of the things that God is pouring out into Rollins, it's because people do not don't see the greatness that can come from this place. They look at Casper. Casper's a big town. Cheyenne's a big town. Jackson Hole. I think we chipped that off and gave it to Idaho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not getting trash talking. Love you. Jesus loves you all. <laughs> But here's a, here is what we've got to see is that there has to be a spark. Now, I don't know if you guys know who Dutch Sheets is. Does anybody know who Dutch Sheets is? We just went okay. to talk about them before. Yes, I have. There's Dutch Sheets and Chuck Pierce. Now, they spoke in Casper about, I want to say, in 2000. Uh, it may have been 1999, somewhere right in that area. But they went through and they prophesied over all 50 states. And what they said in Wyoming is that there would be, this would be an epicenter. <clears throat> and it, there would be an explosion that would go from Casper out. Wow. Don Hinton, who, Don Hinton is uh, the guy who I'm a pastor under in, in uh, another group called Harvest Fields Ministries. Uh, Don Hinton... Do you guys remember the Troopers? How many of you guys remember the Troopers? The Broom? Yeah, Bugles. Yeah, you guys remember it? Did you ever see that? They used to do this thing where they were all blowing their horns and drones, and they would form the wagon wheel, and there would be all these spikes coming, and they would march together. It was pretty awesome. Okay? One thing Don Hinton had seen, well, because he traveled with Dutch Sheets and uh, Chuck for quite a while, and what they saw was out of cash for all of this had come. Now, I believe that. But the fuse has to get lit in order for the explosion to take place. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't like the fuse today. Your next speaker is going to like the fuse. I came to prepare your hearts for him. I know that I had to be here so he could come. I've never met him. I, I, I'm going to read his book. I'm going to learn some stuff about him. I'm hoping to meet him. But I know that I am here as a messenger running in front of him. Because he is going to extend some prophetic gifts into you like you've never seen before. I want to bring my team up if you guys would come up. And what is going to happen, if you guys just line up over here. And I'm going to, I'm going to introduce you all. Don't try to heal Scott. 
He's got a thing with his leg, but I'm going to tell you, what that really is is sanctified day. Every time people say, hey, I want to kill you, he goes, come on over here, kneel down, and I'll pray for you. <laughs> but here's going to be the thing. Help me with the guy's name again. Don. Don. Don Lynch. I should remember that. His daughter's last name is now Lynch. Don Lynch, when Don comes, and this is a message to you, Don, if you're watching this, and I hope that you are. Light that fuse. Because our state is starving to death for Christ. Come to this desert place in order for that fuse to be lit. And there's going to be the explosion because the money, the resources, everything needed to make this happen is in Casper. I guarantee you it is there. But it is going to start in this town. It's going to start in this place and it's going to go there and it will explode and it's going to change things. And one thing that we've got to break, and you guys have got to start praying against, is this uh, spirit that we have of the pioneer spirit. We've got to break that in our state because we're all too stupid and independent. That we will not cling to one another and love one another. Set aside our petty differences, amen? Right. amen. Right. If you guys will just set aside those differences, it, it's got to start inside the building. You guys have got to do it. You guys have got to come and repent with each other. There needs to be nights of prayer. There needs to be moments of empowerment to each other. Do not mistake that these kids do not have something to add. Because our children always have something to add. I've spent many hours in prayer with those two boys and that little girl right there praying, and they were teaching me stuff. Yeah. Why? Because they're open to the thought process. Amen? Amen? If we start to break some of this cycle of where we're separating ourselves, because here in Wyoming, you guys all know, we, I have two and a half acres of land. My neighbor is about an acre away. And I should have built my house over here a little further. <laughs> right? Isn't that how we all think? Yeah. Yeah. Instead of loving our neighbor, we're like, man, I should have put some distance. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, what we've got to do is we have got to break that cycle. But it's going to start in a small place like this. Do not think of yourself as a small church. A remnant is what will be waiting on Jesus when he arrives. Amen. Be part of the remnant. The remnant is obedient. In your prayer life, we go to Him first and foremost with thanks. We don't go with a list of demands. We go to Him with thank yous. And as we say thank you to Him, we say not my will, but your will. What is it that you need me to take place here? When we see that there is a problem in front of us, we don't go to Him and say, Lord, fix the problem. We say, no, fix my mentality Amen. so I figure out what the problem is really about. <clears throat> When we go and we say, I want a different job, why do you, why, why? Why are you not praying for your boss? Why are you not praying for your situation and where you fit in it instead of going, I need it to go away? No, no, what do I need to learn from it? Amen? Amen. All right, I'm on a rampage now. So we're going to, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I want to introduce my team. I'm going to start on that end, leaving you for last. <laughs> that's, my, that's my wild wonder right there. Okay, I, I'm going to let each one of them introduce themselves. I'm going to introduce their names, but I'm going to let them tell you a little brief story about themselves. And if they have something for an individual, if they have something for the church, if you, you guys may have something for somebody that's not even here and they're on camera. Okay, they may not even be here and may not even watch it for a couple of weeks or whatever. You let your minds free. Not about what you're thinking, it's about what he's thinking. We open our mouths and we let him out. Amen? Amen. Right here on the end is uh, Mike Leone. And I, I just the reason I want to introduce my team is because of my love for them. Mike Leone and I were in a motorcycle club together uh, that we left uh, that I left 17 years ago. He continued on into into some heavier outlaw life. Um, but we came to Christ last year. We baptized him here this past uh, Easter. Yeah, he's my wild one. He, they're all wild ones. Uh, and then I have Mrs. Smith, Miss Carissa, and uh, we had sent Scott. He said, he said, I'm going to Florida to go to school. 
And he went, and then he brought back a degree in Hawaii. <laughs> but Scott is uh, originally out of Michigan, and I met him on the prison yard. Right? I did. And you all know I'm the preacher. I'd ask questions about that. <laughs> so the thing is, is that with that, Scott was there. He's actually was there with another ministry. He met me. Uh, I, I will just briefly say, he wanted to argue with everything I had to say, but he would go home and read his Bible. And like, man, it is written in there. And he said, it is right there. And eventually, he always had a relationship with Jesus, but all of a sudden he had a relationship with the Holy Spirit living inside of him. Amen? I'll let you expand any way you want. Misty. Has uh, we got Misty. Uh, we, Brent and I get called to ministries all the time, and we actually went to the Wyoming Central Rescue Mission. And when we got there, we were leading a Bible study down there, and we actually had two people that we were sent there for. One is not here today because he's on the road. But we received Misty and uh, William uh, out of that. And then the minute we had them, our kind of our ministry kind of died there. Because we realized that God had sent us in there to get her and to get William. And she's about to start Bible college, but she's incredibly prophetically gifted. And uh, so I, she has got a wild story that uh, uh, you guys want to tune in. The one thing with all of them on the Barbarian Prophet, on the podcast, you can come and hear each one of their testimonies uh, and, and listen to that. And then there's this wild lady I picked up 33 years ago. <laughs> In a cemetery. In a cemetery. <laughs> Amen, that's a true story. I met my wife at a cemetery. Well, you know, she's getting rid of the last one. I was like, I'm taking a chance. <laughs> I was hoping to bury that one. <laughs> what happened is uh, we both worked there. And, uh, and we met, and uh, yeah, we've been, 34 years we've been together, 33 years we've yeah. been married. And we have one daughter, and we have two wonderful grandchildren. We have an awesome son-in-law. And then Brent. One day I met Brent at jail. He was actually with the AA group, and he was coming in, and, and uh, another uh, guy I had with me, uh, which his name was Craig, and Craig said, uh, hey, I want to bring this other dude. And I said, okay, we'll bring him. And then, uh, then they kicked you out of jail. And then he came back to be, uh, he said, no, man, I want to preach Jesus. So he came back in. And we believe in the AA program and the NA program, especially where they help in that. But he wanted to take it a lot further than they were taking it. And so you've been with me now five years at the county jail. And then he's married to this lovely lady here, Miss Dawn. And uh, Dawn, the Dawn. We call her the Dawn. Yeah, we call her the Dawn. And this is why we call her the Dawn is because whenever I refer to Holy Spirit, I refer to him as Holy Spirit. And she says, why don't you call him the Holy Spirit? I said, well, do we call you the Dawn? <laughs> his name is Holy Spirit. Right. It's, not, it's not the. It's not his first name. It's not his name. He is the third person that God had. Right. And so we refer to her as the Don just as fun. But I tell you, uh, I'll be real honest with you, is that Don, Brent, and Christy, the four of us meet on a very regular basis. And we, we meet uh, and pray, and we meet and talk, and when there's visions to share, there's things written down, we, we make sure we keep each other on task. Uh, because it, it, I, I'm just a guy, he's just a guy, and these are just ladies. There's nothing special about us other than Jesus. Any, the only difference between y'all and me is I got the microphone. Any one of you can stand up here and proclaim the love of Christ to any group of people, anywhere, anytime. And you should be. You should be. You should be developing a team within your own church. You should be developing your own team to, to be going after things. And it could be going after people because the more you hold together, but you got to hold each other accountable. That also means when you screw up. 
When you make, make a big mistake, hey, is it everybody ain't there pointing a finger? Because one thing I've heard Brent preach, and I, I love this in The Passion. You guys all see The Passion? Everybody seen that? You remember when they bring the woman in adultery? And you see Jesus lean down and he draws a line in the sand. Yeah. And I love the camera angle of that because it's showing him draw the finger. And him and the woman are on one side of the line. And all of the church is on the other side of the line. Yeah. And you've got tradition or grace. You can either choose a rock or choose forgiveness. Amen. You need to figure out which side of the line you're going to be on. Because we all have that opportunity. Amen? Amen. Alright, I'm going to start down on this end of the line with Mike. Let's see what happens. How you guys doing? Yeah. I'm not a preacher or anything, but I'm a believer. And, um, like you said, we were in a motorcycle club, but the last 20 years of my life I spent in a very dangerous motorcycle club. And God, the Word, the Holy Spirit came to me and said, You have two weeks or you're going to die. I turned my stuff in and I quit, and some stuff went down, and if I would have stayed in the club, I would have been dead after those two weeks. And he just did so much, I don't even say miraculous stuff, but he did so much powering stuff in my life to get me from where I was in Michigan, back to Colorado, back to Wyoming, that he worked miracles in my life that so many of that I couldn't even tell you. From uh, I got a car with four flat tires, and no winter wipers and a blizzard, and, and people help give me money, I mean, the power of God to get me through just to hear is, is incredible. And, you know, I'm not a preacher, but I'm just giving you my story, and it is what it is, but the power of God is, is so strong and so loving that I'm blown away by it, and I'm still new to all of this, and it's still pretty wild, but it, it's strong and it's powerful, and, and it, it's taught me so much about love, because the Father loves us so much, and I have a dog that I love to death. I have an old in this whole dog. And he is so kind and very gentle. And the love that I, I have in the relationship with him is like from the Father. That he had, he gives us such unconditional love that we don't realize how strong and incredible it truly is. Because our eyes are closed and we're not opening them. But when we open them, we see them. You know, I love that dog so much, and just to think how much the, our Father loves us compared to my love for the dog, it, it just blows my mind how powerful he is and how strong the love he has for us. That it, it's incredible, and that, that's all I really have to say. I just love you all, I don't know. <laughs> Um, Bert started to speak, I immediately saw all of the women in the room, and um, the Lord had me bring anointing oil this morning, that um, is actually from Jerusalem, and from Israel, and it's called Esther's anointing, Amen. and immediately when he started speaking, I just saw all of you have the anointing of Esther, that you were called to this place for such a time as this. That you are called to this situation that you're in for such a time as this. And you need the boldness and the strength that Esther had to do the thing that God is calling you to do. There's something that you look at and you say, this is impossible. I'm just me. I just, I just work and I, I come home and I have my kids and I'm just, I'm just me. I'm just a mom. I'm just a daughter, I'm just a student, but I want to tell you that God has placed something inside of you. The same way that he had placed inside of Esther, a purpose and a calling beyond her years, beyond her situation, beyond. He has placed something inside of you, beyond what you see yourself. And he's calling you right now to step up to that and walk forward. I can't imagine the moments from when the doors open to when she actually approached the king. Those are moments of sheer terror and fear, and you don't know what is going to happen on the other side. I can promise you that you have the favor of God Almighty, the King of Kings, and He will always extend that grace towards you. And so if you would like to be anointed um, at the end. At the end. Okay.
And I would like to pray for you after when I anoint you. Well, the main thing that I saw is I want to remind each of you to not underestimate the power of God in you. Amen. Don't underestimate your spoken word that he speaks through you. Um, I see you as a bunch of warriors. And so the key to remember is always wear your armor, okay? But also figure out and ha know how to utilize the weapons that he's given us. Yes. Because often as a body of Christ, we use the wrong weapons yeah. to fight with. Okay? So ask the Lord, how can we use the weapons he's given us? His word. Okay? Sometimes the word is used as a weapon, but uh, also use it as an anchor. Okay? Mm -hmm. To help you stand firm and not waver. Okay? Um, also... The other thing with your armor is clothe yourself with love and clothe yourself with humility. Okay? So, but just remember the spoken word. Okay? You have power. So as you pray, there's a lot of prayer warriors in here. Know that those prayers are being heard. Know that those prayers are shaking things up. Know that those prayers are more impactful than you can even imagine. And the harvest of those prayers, the fruit that is bared, uh, is going to be greater than you can even imagine. Amen. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, Hi. Hi. Um, does anyone in here have a sick child? Does anyone in here have, I mean, spiritually sick or just a sick child anywhere? Well, the Lord just kept putting that on my heart, just sick child, sick child, sick child. So, I mean, after we get done up here, if we could just pray with you. And, you know, if anyone, pray for her, pray, pray for your family. I don't know, but that was the word, and God just kept pushing me. Because I, I was spoken a word on the way here, but I think that was for me. I think it was God was telling me. Yeah. Come on. Okay, so I was looking, and I was very tired, you know, because I'm not old. <laughs> I'm not old, so. Right, yeah. <laughs> we call her this morning and go pick her up at 5 30 this morning. She goes, You people are old. And I said, What does that mean? She goes, You guys are all awake and all good to go. She so ready to go to bed at 8 o'clock at night. I'm like, Yeah, boys. <laughs> You're like, Buckle up, Buttercup, we're going to Rollins. <laughs> um, I, well, anyway, so I was like halfway, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I was kind of halfway asleep, and I looked up, and you know when you're looking up at the, you know, you see the sun and there's some clouds, and you see rays of light shining through. You know, you don't see the whole sun. And I hear all the time, you know, praise God during the storm, but we just, it seems so cliche. It seems so cliche, we don't really dive into it, just praise God in the storms, look at Jesus in the storm. Well, when I was looking at those clouds, you know what the clouds were doing? They were temporarily covering the sun. Yeah. Te temporarily separating us from the sun. And I've had situations in my life this last month that have fixed my focus on the problem. Yeah. Not on my God. And that's being honest. Yeah. I was looking at the person, not what was happening on the spiritual end of things. Right? Yeah. Give, them, you know? give them the word. Not the Oh, yeah, this is great. Go, Jesus. <laughs> so I was going to work and said I was paying attention to the thorn in my side and not, or the thorn in my flesh and not the God by my side. I was like, whoa, that was Jesus, man. That was not me. That was cool, right? So um, I guess we need to fix our focus today. And I know that's true for me because when I'm fixing my focus on, oh, this person's giving me grief, that's not focusing my eyes on my father. That's not being heaven to earth thinking, that's earth to heaven thinking. So I've had to, you know, I've had miracles happen, and it's just, you know, even with a miracle happen, I'm still a Peter sometimes. You know what I mean? I can be the loudest person there. Jesus, I'll never turn my back from you. And you know what? This last month, that's what happened. So just fix your eyes, Rollins, because this is going to be the place where the match is lit. Amen. Amen. Hey, I usually don't get this. This is 
way different for me. So, okay, I, on the way down here, a guy showed me a, a, like a vision, a little, a little thing, which he usually doesn't do. Usually I get word. Um, but on the way down here, I saw Rollins like under this glass dome. And there was like this veil that was between it and the light. But inside the dome, everybody was living in light, but it was a false light. It was a fake light. And on the outside of the dome, there was a little tear. And there was a bunch of people on one side, and either something or other people on the other side, and he had this like tug of war rope. And they're going back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. And in the middle, instead of a knot, there was like this hook. And he was just saying, it if y'all got on the same side, you guys could rip that veil open. So when you sang that song today, I was like, okay, I got it. I'll say it. You know what I mean? It's like he kind of has to nudge me along a little bit. But I really feel like sometimes all those petty things that we go back and forth with, it keeps us from ripping things wide open. It keeps us so focused on the little things that we're not seeing the bigger picture. And I feel like the heaviness of what that fakeness puts over the top of it is what is keeping us from loving one another, is keeping us from going out. Um, I know we all have busy lives, and I, I have it, and sometimes those things keep us from doing really what God wants us to do. And those things will still be there. They're not going anywhere. Believe it or not, I keep hoping and it's still all there. But in the meantime, you go out, you go love, you go you go do things that are sometimes hard to do, but it needs to be done. So, okay, that was the picture I got. Okay, now I get to on you people a little bit. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to point any... Yes, I do. I'm pointing people out because that is what God has focused or what I have highlighted. You with the dark hair right there. You. Yes, you. He told me, you need to get up out of that row. You need to get up out of that chair. And you need to worship the way you want to worship. And he said, when you do that, it will free other people to do it also. I will sit there too. Yes. And, we, and no matter who is here, no matter where you're at, no matter what, if you feel it, you show it. Because you are going to be the, a person that releases that to other people. Okay? Okay. You, the sick child. Courtney. Courtney. Okay, Courtney. God wants to know this. He wants you to know that you are not in, invisible. Thank you, That people see you. That people see your heart, that people see your kindness, and that don't ever feel like you are not important because you were such a huge, important piece to so many people's lives. Okay? Um, sir, sit by yourself back there. <laughs>
He says that that the heart you have in you can bring so much to people. That he says sometimes he knows the hurt, he knows the hardship. He says, I'm walking right there with you, honey. I'm never going to let you fall. I'm right here. When you feel it, when you need it, I'm right here for you. Okay? What I got. And he's out there and he's doing 
you may, I know he's made for a time like this. Just like she said, we all are here, and we are such a time as this. And so I love that Esther anointing, because that's amazing. That's amazing, and I'm going to pass her, I'm going to go crazy and all. <laughs> um, um, I'm passing it to you, honey. <laughs> want to reconfirm to you, brother, what Kirsty said. When I sat down next to you, you're holding a hurt from your childhood that he wants to heal today. You do not have to leave here the way he came. Amen. It's holding you back Amen. from being the man of God he's called you to be. So today is the day I want to put hands on you before we go and pray with you. For you five right here, you older, not meaning anything by it. I want to tell you guys it's not a season of retirement, it's a season of refirement. Yeah. Guys, we have a bunch of young people in here that we need to take under our wings and help them cut their teeth in what it is to travail in prayer. The call of the hour is prayer. All these things that we're seeing, the the visions and all of that are are a call to the cross. It's a time for us to come back and get our hearts right with God. Um, I see, and I'll just put it out there, the Lord has dropped plumb line over the body of Christ. We need to take a moment and check ourselves against what God says. The truth of His Word. How far off one side or the other are we? We need to get back to true vertical. Because once we have the true vertical, we can pour out the horizontal. That vertical, that is a conduit. We need to check ourselves against that. Um, Rick, with uh, I watched the word with the map, with the vision for Wyoming. I want to tell you guys that that uh, two weeks before that, I was praying over specifically you went to county for an, a, a church, and what the Lord showed me is that it's a strategic piece of ground that we need. That is in the corner on the front line of some of the biggest false teaching and false religion, and we have no foothold in that land. Yeah. We need to start the war for the land around us. Yeah. This is, you know, not, I'll just go to Joel. Good. I'm going to Joel. That we need to, <coughs> Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 3. We'll forgive you an address. Go. No, no, I need the address. You need the address. <laughs> Verse 9, he says, Proclaim this to the nations, prepare for war. It is not a season of peace, it is a time for war. We are preparing for the battle that is coming. And he goes on to say, he says, Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. We need to beat our plowshares into swords and our pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. He's taking our farming equipment and we're turning them into offensive weapons. We can't. We need to learn to war for the land. And what I'm talking about is the land of the harvest. We can't plant a crop of righteousness on land we don't own. We need to clean our hearts. It's time to rend our hearts and not our garments. We need to ask ourselves, why are we coming here? Why are we coming here? Are we coming here for him or for the other people? We need to look around out there and become people who are, we are here to follow him. So we are here to follow the cloud and not the culture. We are sent to change the culture around us. That it is time to, you got something? Keep going. I'm going. Finish. Finish. Okay. Isaiah chapter 60 was something I got over Pentecost, and it's very important because a lot of a lot of this is the same stuff that I, I, I I'll be honest. When I watched Rick's word a couple weeks ago, it brought tears to my eyes because it reconfirmed some things for me that that Wyoming is a strategic piece of land that we have to war for. War for people here. 
We need to we need to rend our hearts. That is the call of the hour right now. That we, it is time to get back into prayer. If there is bitterness and unforgiveness, we need to make peace with those things and with those individuals because God's glory is about to pour out. Yeah. And what I'm talking about is He's announcing the arrival of the light. Isaiah chapter six. He says, "Arise." and shine. It's time to shine. It's time to step into the darkness, not to be taken over by it, but to consume it and overcome it. We are warriors for the kingdom of heaven. We are bringing in heaven to earth. We need to get into the prayer and come into a place of understanding the power that we have, that we are not beggars standing before the king. We are sons and daughters. He calls us kings and priests, and we are asking for his hand to help us in what he's asking us to do. We need to, to just pour it out. We need to let the light shine. I'll wait. I'm going to wait on that. Okay. No, I understand. You're good. My team gets wound up. Are we all still good? Yeah. Okay. One thing that I, I want to kind of lay out for uh, everyone is, is two things. Is one is what Don was talking about about that that swirling. What has happened today is that that swirling has taken place, and that I'm going to step through you too. Um, and what has happened is we we have started to have a fire start to burn because you cannot deny inside your hearts right now that you are thinking different. This may be your first time in this place, honey. But I'm going to tell you right now, you know that Jesus Christ is beckoning to you in a way that he has never beckoned before. And that you have loved him. Not only have you loved him, but it is the moment where you're going to surrender to him today. You're going to accept Jesus Christ into your life like you never have before. You knew who he was, but now you're going to know him as a father. Amen. 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 When we're done here, you're going to accept Christ. Amen. 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 Let's not wait until later. Let's do it right now. Come on. Let's let come to church. You come to church. You come to talk to the pastor Bert for a minute. <laughs> Now, one thing is that we are called up to be warriors. And I know we're picking on you, baby. 
good fella. Where'd this guy go? What's his name? EJ. Oh, EJ. I've never met him. Oh, you haven't? No. I'll save his for when he gets back. Oh, you should call him Pastor. Pastor is not something he retires from. Pastor's not something he retires from. You can drill on that a little bit. Okay, EJ. EJ, I'm going to tell you what I see when I saw you. Alright? Here's an honest fact. What I saw is an anchor. Yeah. And I want to say I want to say from the rest of us in Wyoming, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being in this right place. Thank you. Thank you for being an anchor when other people wanted to run. Thank you for not running when you felt. Because I guarantee you, you're just like me as a pastor. How many times did you go back and go, oh, you're thinking, right? <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, you stuck it out. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't retired. You are retired. Amen. Okay? <laughs> Rick is running the game. Yeah. But you have got to be one of his generals now. Yes. Okay? It's, a cha it's, it's not a cha even a change of position. It's just a change in attitude. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Now, the one thing I will speak over this church is that, especially with you young men, with you young men, and, and when I say young men, I'm looking right at you, right there. <laughs> and then you, and then you, young man, and you, young man. Here's a reality. Psalm 27. The Lord is my self, if the Lord is the light of my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, yes. that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, Amen. to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies, all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy, J-O-Y, in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God, my salvation. When my father and my mother forsook me, or excuse me, forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in smooth paths because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me. Has that ever happened in this church? Has that ever? That, I think it has. Uh, and such as breathe out violence, they wanted to shut you guys down. I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. The one thing that I wanted, wanted to bring that up is because as you guys prepare for the things that are coming, it ain't going to be easy. If you need it to be easy, you better find somewhere else to be. It's going to be tough. But you guys are going to grow. Amen. Something's coming. Amen. And it started in here today. I'm telling you, all we did was strike, we, we, we brought the match, but the match ain't been lit yet. When Don comes here, with, that's his name, right? Lynch, Mr. No, Mr. Lynch no. comes, comes here. Things are going to get different really, really fast for you guys. Mm -hmm. Prepare your hearts between now and the time he comes. Meet, pray, pray for him, pray for the things coming. Pray for the people to come. Be sure you advertise, be sure you, be sure you set things up. What you've seen today and what you've felt today is the gospel being preached. 
G-O-S-P-E-L. I'm an acronym guy. God's only son providing everlasting life. And that happened right here. Amen? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to pray you guys out. And I, I know we ran way over our time. Oh, no. But I don't even feel bad. <laughs> so I, I'm going to pray you guys out. And then... Uh, what we're going to do is, team members, if you guys are kind of sprinkle around the room, you guys need prayer, somebody has spoken to your heart, somebody you need, some, definitely you ladies need to be, you know, over here. What do you got, brother? Before we pray out,